right, let's play this here. It's fairly short and that's it. Now, you have sent me some notes here. So the animation is still linear. Nothing's splined out. You're saying that you know the legs are the legs. The arms are still moving at the end and you're gonna probably add a second chunk. I was gonna say, yes, it, it needs a beat. Doom, doom. You know, like another, at least a second. Yeah, I would say another second at least, just to feel it comes to an end where just the character can settle. So in the body here and in the head, it might, you know, depending how you want to play this, a bit of a roll this way. They can kind of overture and come back a bit. You know, these guys can swing to an end. There might even be a bit of a, oh, my legs out, being relaxed. It depends on what you want to add, but for sure it needs another beat. Uh, but let me see, you have also a couple of questions. Let me just check those out. And the first question is about your arms. So you had some problems with the arms popping and cleaning them up a lot as you were focusing on this section of the animation there. I'm uh, wondering if that's normal. And this really kind of depends if it's, uh, uh, you know, in, in FK mode, depending on the rig, if you move any of this, it's going to influence your arm. You can, you can change that to IK, but then the tricky thing is that when the body moves and you don't, you're not careful, let's go to where the body moves here. So when the body moves, goes down here that arm could still be here and start to overextend that ik arm so there's pros and cons about you know ik fk which will be a future fnx it is a pain now you're asking is it better to hide the arms you can you can absolutely and i do this sometimes too where i hide certain sections just concentrate on something to really polish that or give it you know like a good a good pass I think in your case, it might be okay to do that. The only thing I'd be careful in general when you hide arms is that let's pretend it's a big plop back and that arm will go from whatever here, it's a long arm, to swinging all the way over here. Now imagine it does this big swing. If that arm is, you know, on the heavier side, it's beefier arms, so I'm talking again generally, then at this point, that swing out here would pull the shoulder back this way as well. And because of that pull here, it's going to rotate that chest around because it's pulling from here, right? This pulls this way, it's gonna take that chest and rotate. With a little bit of movement in that chest, it's gonna influence the hips. Because of the hips, it's gonna move the, the, the knees a bit and maybe a tiny bit the feet. So what I'm saying is that if you hide arms and just concentrate on this, it might be fantastic. And then you just move the arm, but then it's gonna feel like that arm swing has zero influence on the rest of the body. I think it's okay as a first rough pass. If you do this to get the proper root weight and all the, you know, the impact and the and just the weight of it, and then you do the arms. But then as a next pass, make sure that well, whatever arm movement you have, that it's going to go back and influence the rest. So there's always going to be a bit of a back and forth. So that's about your question one, and then your second question is because you do have uh, facial possibilities here. You're asking me if I am, if you block the face at the same time, you work the body or you wait to complete the body and then you focus on the face. It really depends. Like the classic things that you do the body first and then the face because the body should read and that's just the icing on the cake. Um, for me, that's yes and no. I usually do very rough hand poses and very rough uh, facial poses, mainly because there are a couple of things to this. Like sometimes people ask um, for a face cam where the camera is attached to the GoPro and you can just see the face. And they, they're critiquing things like that where they just want to see the face, you know, straight to camera. I'm not a massive fan to, about this because not that this shot shows it, but let's pretend he would sit down and roll over this way. We just see kind of the camera is, you know, technically behind the character, right? So the camera is looking this way in this, but as he sits down, he rolls over and he turns the head away we might only see up to here. So I'm gonna concentrate on this shape the most, but then you get notes sometimes on this side as well, which is not really useful, unless there's a, a big um, anatomical reason of a jaw that would then move something behind the character or hair, or I don't know what it is, but usually I wanna block things out very roughly at the beginning. Again, that's just me, it's usually people do that at the end, but I like to do it at the beginning very roughly because once I see something like that, I can see that whatever I blocked out, blocked out roughly, 
the speed of this is going to tell me, hmm, do I need to push this later on so you can read well or what I did is already enough. But of course, you can do this at the end. I like to do those at the beginning because when the body is not moving at all, I can just concentrate on the face. I can rotate the camera around. It's just I can see everything without this, you know, without this moving, because then you might have to attach a camera to the head and so on and so on. To me, it's just a bit cleaner. But then again, every now and then, I just want to really concentrate on the main body animation, especially something like this, because it's a full body wide shot. The body language has to really work. And then at the end, oh, well, let me just block out some, some rough stuff. Again, it just kind of depends on the workflow, but I tend nowadays to do a very rough blocking pass first, but nothing is moving in the scene. And then that way I already have some rough, rough stuff in there, especially if someone goes from, you know, something very angry to potentially very happy and that's what angry happy <laughs> uh and i want to see that change how much does that change read on top of body animation eh, just kind of me you can you can do this however you want again the classic thing is body first and then a face at the end now that being said i wonder if at the beginning we are almost a bit too far back i wonder if you want to start with You have a bit of a shoulder droop here oh, into this. And you can. There's something about where I would probably move that root just a bit further back. And that way you have also a nicer silhouette with your back arm. So both arms could be behind the pelvis there. This might be really stretching it, but you might as well push it. Because right now, this is a bit of a bummer that the hand is right there and it kind of clogs up the silhouette there. So, or you start with potentially a fully profile with the body actually like this and hands are like that um so you have a, a reverse c curve so it's kind of ah, big side going backwards leading into this but it's kind of up to you i think for this if you wanted to stick with that i would probably move the pelvis a bit more this way and the, the whole route push that a bit more and then you can even stretch out the legs a bit more so they're less bent and again it will give you a bit more room for both arms to fall behind the body but again this might be pushed much but i don't to me it would help also by straightening this leg you will avoid the tangent there i'm real picky about that stuff here where you got that that right where the shin is the tibia isn't it in terms of the weight it's cool i'd be careful moving the chair because once you move the chair I want to see this move back with the chair. So now you have a sliding chair where the root is not really involved. I do like interacting with the prop and moving that stuff around. And you can even you can imagine if it sits this far back, you can almost have a moment of the chair getting off the ground and then the legs are off the ground and it depends on how far you want to push this. But as of now, I'm a bit concerned about the silhouette. It feels slightly off balance because of that head being so far back. Boom. I do like the timing boom, of that. You can then probably have a bit of a, a little bit of bounce up and down on that root. Not much, just a little bit. And if for complexity, you can imagine that it also lands on one of these sides first. A bit of offset in the hips. So it's kind of a pong pong, like a one, two. It's just for the root to me there. You could also argue that if that root is here and it droops, it's a bit straight. You can also just have a path of a bit like this as it leans backwards. So it's not so IK straight, a bit of an arc boom, into that. I like this. I got that boom, compression there, the head as well. I think that's cool. But again, you need more time to swing that arm back and forward. And then on, on the screen right arm, it's a bit funky. You have if it's if the characters you know if you start like this to me this seems tired or just really <gasps> what have i done type of thing and if it's just kind of plopping down then to me this is too much of a counter it doesn't feel like the, the hands are just the arms are just hanging and a bit dragging and then boom on impact swinging back right now it feels like it's a very deliberate move up and then pose wise it feels a bit too straight like you're holding that straight for quite some time which again feels very deliberate and doesn't feel quite like a, a loose arm swinging, especially the screen right one. I do like the feet though, that you have 
a bit more offset there. It does feel there's a little bit of rotation in Y, which is cool, and up this way. But I would probably like an X, whatever your rotation is, though. You're gonna see it here. You can probably rotate sideways, pivoting off one of the sides of the shoe for a bit more complex stuff here. Since he's leaning this way, I don't know there's something about where you have that that again shoe uh, pivot off this side and then boom, flatten on the way down. Yeah, I mean, the main thing when I watch this, this seems slightly off balance. This is a bit of a bummer silhouette wise, and we need a longer ending to finish that swing. Uh, that is me dragging this around. What am I doing here? And that arm felt a bit too held here versus a swing. These are the immediate impressions that I had. And everything else I've been talking about for 10 minutes, it's just me rambling. <laughs> but I just want to give you my thoughts, uh, you know, the thought process of looking at this and also answer your question in your mail. Uh, I hope that was a good answer or a helpful answer at least. And if not, let's go back and forth through email. But as always, I wanted to answer this in the critique in case someone is watching this and is also curious about the answer. And that is it. All right. Thank you. All right, there's an email, you can sign up, you can start whenever you want, you can submit whenever you want, you get 16 submissions. Either way, a like and subscribe would be awesome. All right, thank you.